my name is Kirsten Schnell. I'm a fourth grade teacher in Northern Colorado, and this is the Crazy Cat Classroom. So there is this teacher, a teacher tuber. Um, his channel is called The Chronicles of Teacher Tay, and he is an elementary school music teacher. By the way, all respect in the world for elementary specials teachers. At least that's what we call them. We call them specials. I don't know how you do it, but you do it well. Um, I subbed as, uh, as a music teacher and a PE teacher, and wow. Um, very difficult going from like fifth grade to kindergarten to back to fourth grade then second grade i don't know how you do it but you are amazing so teacher tay you are amazing and you're amazing in more than one way because you created this teacher tag in which i felt very compelled to do a youtube video on but i wanted to do this teacher tag as my very first video just to let you guys get to know me as a teacher so he did this teacher tag on why do you love being a teacher? And his philosophy was during these times of remote learning, sometimes it's really hard to remember our why. And our why is so important when it comes to teaching. And I really feel that I was called to add to this conversation. This is my second year teaching. And so I wanted to put my hat in the ring. He asked four questions. What are five things you love about being a teacher? What is one thing you would say to a new teacher? What is one thing you would say to a burnout teacher? And what are three things you wish you knew before you started teaching? So let's start with the first one. Five things I love about teaching. Number one, the kids. I would not be in this profession if I didn't love kids. I feel like I get along better with children than I do adults. And yeah, I just, I mean, I do this job because of the kids. It doesn't matter if they're two, and it doesn't matter if they're 15. I love them. I talk about in my classroom how we're a big family, and I truly believe that. So, kids, number one, always, always, always. Number two, I get to learn 24 seven. That's one reason why I love being a teacher. Um, I took a strength finders test. Turns out one of my high ones are is a learner, which I feel like is a really, awesome thing that I'm a teacher. And one of my high, high strengths is that I love to learn. I love to learn about new subjects. I love to learn about teaching and my craft. I love to learn about my hobbies. And speaking of my hobbies and interests, my third thing of why I love to be a teacher is because I get to be creative. I'm a very creative mind. Um, I'm a very visual learner. So because I am so visual and artistic and creative. I love to find ways to help my students and I get to be really creative in how I do that. And there's not a whole lot of professions out there where I can just show my creativity and try something out. And so I'm really thankful that I have this career that I have I kind of walked into. Fourth reason why I love to be a teacher is because I feel like I'm on stage all the time. And most some people might not like that, but I was a drama kid in high school and I just, I really liked being able to put on this persona and get up in front of people. Though I am very authentic in front of my kids. The thing is, is that I feel that with my background in acting, it has helped me learn how to have the stamina of having high, high energy on for a very, very long period of time until I'm out, right? Until I'm out of that energy. So I feel that acting has really helped me in that area. And being able to just get on, up in front of people, I feel like I have that as an advantage. So, moving on. Number five. I love being a teacher because I get to be the teacher I didn't have. Now given, I had some amazing teachers growing up, but I am dyslexic and I was always thought that I was smart in math, I was smart in science, 
I was even smart in social studies. When it came to reading, when it came to writing, when it came to grammar, I was dumb. I believed that identity, and though it, my teachers may have not told me I was dumb, their actions and some of the suggestions that they suggested implied that I may not be as smart or well-versed as some of my peers. And in a lot of reflection in becoming a teacher, I realized those identities and have realized that I, I had to kind of kill those identities. Because though reading, writing, spelling, and grammar are not my strengths, I have learned how to overcome those weaknesses through practice. I've learned the importance of believing in yourself and having confidence. And I feel like half the battle with my students is the confidence piece. Just them believing in themselves that they are capable of doing something that is hard and may not come easy to them. And so I wish I had a teacher and given, like I said, I did have amazing teachers and I did have teachers who did believe in me. If I didn't have those teachers in my life, and a lot of them didn't come until I was in middle school and high school. So if I didn't have those teachers in my life at the elementary level, when I started to realize these identities that either they were putting on me or my peers were putting on me, or maybe even myself just observing would have put on me. If I could be that teacher to give them the confidence at fourth grade, imagine the world that they can change when they are in high school. Imagine the world that they can change when they're in middle school. Their concept of who they are before those formative adolescent years is, is one of the main reasons, other than the children, why I got into teaching. So those are my five things that I love to be about being a teacher. One thing I would say to a new teacher. So I had the pleasure of working with a brand new first year teacher and given, yes, this is my only my second year. But one thing that I have learned is you have to try to find a balance. I was very fortunate enough to be married when I went into the teaching profession. And I was also very fortunate of having multiple jobs outside of the teaching profession where I was able to leave work at work and leave home at home and then being able to have that clear boundary before I got into teaching. So maybe it's not necessarily a balance. Maybe it's more boundaries, setting your boundaries because and setting them right out of the gate. The reason why this is so important is because if you don't set those boundaries, you're going to burn out. Given, that doesn't mean don't work at home, right? I work at my home. My husband plays video games. I have nothing to do. I'll do some work. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is you need to find what works best for you. The other thing is that you need to take care of yourself because if you don't take care of yourself, you're not going to be the best teacher you can be. I know that sounds counterintuitive. Well, I'm working so hard on my work and I shouldn't that make me be a better teacher? No, it's not because you are not taking care of yourself. You need to take care of yourself. If you're not gonna take care of yourself, no one else will. Because if you take care of yourself, then you'll be a happier person, which means you'll be a happier teacher, which means you'll be a better teacher because you're not gonna get burnt out. All right, so next question. One thing I would say to a teacher feeling burnt out, and what I would say to them is remember your why. I love this tag because I feel like in this remote learning time, it's really hard to remember our why. And it's really hard to not feel burnt out because we're almost to the end of the school year. We're trying this new thing and it's like, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes the kids are on, sometimes they're not. And it's just, to be honest, it can be a really big headache. And you're like, this isn't even the reason why I went into teaching. I didn't go into teaching to talk to a computer or grade. I don't know what your school district is like. I don't know what the perimeters of what you can and cannot do. But I am very fortunate that I have a school district that um, trusts me. And so I can have one-on-one -on -one conversations with students 
um, given their parents are just in the background. But just having that time with me to talk to me if they desire. I also have some group times where I talk to kids and just having that piece of, I'm still in your life and you're still in mine, I feel like is really beneficial for them during this time. And seeing their faces every day definitely reminds me of my why. Oh, I'm getting emotional. Now your why of why you started teaching might be different. So I would say to a veteran teacher, remember your why. And I think that this tag is so beautiful because we get to remember our why and reflect on it. All right, so I'm going on to the very last question. Three things that I wish I knew before I became a teacher. So the first thing is that kids are not going to automatically respect you. And for me, respect's a really big deal. I assumed that most kids, especially at the elementary level, would come in respecting you. And that is not the case, even at the elementary school level. I got to understand their why behind the reason why they acted the way they did and why they didn't respect me right away and why I had to gain their trust. However, when I worked at the middle school level, this was even more difficult because I felt like they were old enough to understand they need to respect adults. And that just was not the case. And that was a really hard lesson to learn and still is a hard lesson to learn. I want them to like me because I want that relationship. I, I care about someone so much that I want that to be reciprocated. And it's really hard when it's not. Two, the second thing you should know is that you are going to be thinking about your job constantly and you need to figure out a way to turn your brain off. You can think about your profession 24 seven. And I know this might be different for different people, but I am constantly thinking, how can I perfect my craft? How can I become better? What can I learn? How can I grow? What's that next step? It's a slow process. It's not going to happen overnight. I feel like that kind of goes hand in hand with the, the finding the balance, figuring out a way to turn off your brain. And then thirdly, something that I wish that I knew before I started teaching is you're going to have really, 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 really bad days. You're going to have days where you're like, oh, why did I even go into this profession? Why did I become a teacher? I want to say that you need to find the silver lining in those bad days because they are, they are there. They're hard to see. Sometimes you might not see it until later, but there are silver linings in those bad days. When you have a bad day after a bad day after another bad day, and they just keep coming, right? It's hard to see the silver lining. My challenge for you is to write down every day what went well and just remember that in the end it is all worth it those bad days after bad day after bad day this remote learning it's all worth it that is it first youtube video in the books hey y'all don't forget to hit that subscribe button it's red and it's down there okay it says subscribe and over yonder, up here somewhere, you can follow me on my Instagram, Crazy Cat Classroom. Also, hit that notification bell so that every time I post a new video, you are notified. I am going to put out a questionnaire on Instagram and on YouTube. I need to figure out an outro because to be honest, I'm new at this and I don't know what to say. You know what I do as a teacher when I don't know what to do? I ask my students. So I'm going to ask you, what should be my outro? Give me some suggestions, put them in the comment box below. And you know what? Maybe yours will win. How hot diggity dog is that? That's it for me. I hope you have a fabulous day. And if you're not a cat person, I'll block you. I'm just joking. <laughs>